Hi everyone, my name is Adarsh Shandan and I'm a Scale Solution Engineer at Databricks. Today, we are going to talk about Network Connectivity Configuration, or NCC as we like to call it. Now, if you have ever wondered how does your Databricks serverless clusters connect to your data sources magically without opening everything up to the internet, that's exactly where NCC comes in. In this video, I'm going to break down what NCC is, why it is so important, and most importantly, walk you through the steps on how to configure NCC for your Databricks workspaces on AWS through the Account Console UI so that your serverless clusters can reach your data sources securely through IP whitelisting on the firewall. Now, before we get started and dive deeper into what NCC is, let's take a moment to understand the Databricks workspace architecture. This is kind of important to get an entire flow of what we are talking about here, so please bear with me for a minute. Each Databricks workspace has two primary components, the control plane, and the compute plane. The control plane is what provides all the managed services from Databricks, and that is where the web app resides. Now, when you log into your Databricks workspace, you are actually logging in to the control plane. And this is where you execute instructions like, hey, Databricks, spin up a cluster, or run this code on this notebook, or schedule this job, and so on, right? And then we have the compute plane, right? So compute plane is where your cluster VMs actually spin up. And there are two flavors of the compute plane available to you. Classic compute plane, which sits in your VPC, in your cloud account, for example, in your AWS account in this case, and the serverless compute plane, which sits on the Databricks side, completely outside of your AWS account. So all the complexities of the network infrastructure is abstracted away from you. Now, here's the problem statement. Say you have a data source and your clusters need to connect to that data source but the data source itself is protected by a firewall. So how does that work? In classic compute plane, it's pretty straightforward. You need to find the VPC on which you have deployed your Databricks workspace in your AWS account, find the NAT gateway attached to your Databricks workspace, get the NAT gateway public IP, and whitelist it on the data sources firewall. And you are all set. Because we know that for classic compute plane, the cluster communication goes out from the private subnets to the NAT gateway, to the internet gateway, finally to your data source. Traversing over the internet, if the data source is outside of AWS, and over the AWS backbone network, if the data source is on AWS. But what if you're using serverless compute? This no longer sits in your VPC, in your AWS account. So you don't really know what IPs to whitelist on the firewall, right? This is where NCC comes to the rescue. NCC helps us manage network connectivity from Databricks serverless clusters to other data sources whether these data sources are on AWS or not. NCCs are account-level regional constructs, meaning you create them from the account console, and each NCC that you create for a region can be utilized by multiple workspaces. NCCs help you expose stable IPs for serverless clusters to be whitelisted on a firewall, but not just that, NCC also helps you create private endpoints and establish private link connection from serverless clusters to other resources on AWS. An important side note, NCC firewall enablement is not supported for Amazon S3 and Amazon DynamoDB. This is because for S3 buckets in the same region as your workspace, serverless compute uses AWS gateway endpoints for connection. There's primarily three things that you could do with NCC. Create shared gateway endpoints to connect securely to S3 and DynamoDB. Expose the stable IPs for the serverless clusters to whitelist those IPs on a firewall. And finally, creating a private link connection to AWS services via private endpoints, endpoint service, and network load balancer. For this video, we are going to focus on the second part. That's exposing the stable IPs for the serverless clusters. There are just a few things to keep in mind before you can start using NCC firewall enablement. Your workspace must be on a premium plan or above. You must be a Databricks account admin to create NCCs and you can create up to 10 NCCs per supported region from your Databricks account. And each NCC that you create for the region can be attached to up to 50 workspaces in the region, right? It's important to make sure that you check that your workspace region is supported for NCC by checking our public documentation. It's available for most regions at the moment, but it's always good to verify. NCCs provide shared stable IP cider blocks per region and not per workspace, so that's an important part. And finally, the resources that you target to connect to from your serverless clusters must be publicly accessible. Great. 
Now that we have got the theory out of the way, let's head over to the Databricks account console to see NCC creation in action. You can see that I am on my Databricks account console now. And if I click on workspaces and click on this workspace, so the workspace name is 00NCC workspace, and this workspace is in US East 1 region, right? So I want to expose the stable IPs of all the serverless compute resources in this workspace, including serverless SQL warehouses, serverless jobs, serverless notebooks, and so on. To do that, I need to create an NCC and attach it to this workspace. Now to create an NCC, I need to go to security on the left, click on network connectivity configuration, and then click on this blue button called add network connectivity configuration. So now uh, the first thing I need to do is provide a name for my network connectivity configuration. So let's do that. Call it 00-NCC-US East 1. So since I know that I'm going to be attaching this NCC to a workspace that's in US East 1, and NCCs are like reusable per region for multiple workspaces, it's a recommended best practice to have the region name in the NCC name as well. Then I will click on the region dropdown and choose US East 1 from the drop down and click on add. So as soon as I do that, you can see that NCC is now created. If I click on that NCC and click on default rules, you can see that the stable IPs for this NCC is now exposed. But if I click on workspaces, you can see that this is not yet attached to my workspace. Now to attach it to my workspace, I'll head back to workspaces and click on my workspace and then click on this update workspace button. And then from the network connectivity configuration dropdown, I'm going to select the NCC that I just created and then click on update. Okay. Now you can see that my workspace is updated with the network connectivity configuration that we just attached. And you can see that the stable IPs for the serverless clusters in this workspace has also been exposed. The stable IPs can take up to 10 minutes to propagate. It's recommended that if you have any up and running serverless clusters in your workspace, you should turn that off, wait for 10 minutes, and then restart them. And this time when they start up, they should be utilizing one of the IPs from the stable range. So that's NCC for you. Thanks you for watching and see you on the next one.